E and the upper bound is at point E. It will figure out for you. By the way, the value of the alpha upper bound is given by this formula right there. That is the value of alpha upper bound. I will explain to you in a minute if you don't understand that value, that formula. And the lower bound at point C is given by this formula right there. Now, you take a look at the formula to give you alpha upper bound. Well, that is equal to the summation of the index V go from 0 to J. What is J? J represents how many iterations it would take you in order to find out the initial upper bound. Like, for example, in this case, initially, you're at point A. At point A, suppose I call that corresponding to iteration J equal to 0. Let's say J equal to 0, iteration 0, at point A. Then it moved to point B, which I call it corresponding to iteration J equal to 1. Point C, let me call it iteration J equal to 2. Point D, I call it iteration J equal to 3. And point E, let's say J is equal to iteration 4. But in general, so in, in this case, let's say after four iteration, you can figure out the upper bound at E and the lower bound at C. So in general, I say the upper bound at iteration J in general. And the lower bound is at iteration J minus 2 in general. That's why you can see in this summation, you can see the index V go from 0 to J. That is the upper bound. And for the lower bound formula, V go from 0 to J minus 2. So let me make the picture look a little bit clearer so that you can see better. Let me erase everything I said so far. Okay, let me erase it so that I can... Okay, so to summarize it, let's see what, 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 is hap what is happening. To summarize it, you say the user specify the value of delta. You can figure out this point, then this point, then this point, then this point, and this point. Now, you can see clearly when you are at iteration J, right there, iteration J, the pattern is changed because instead of going down, going down, going down, now going up. So that's why at iteration J, at iteration J, you can see alpha u equal to this much. In fact, suppose you let J equal to 4. Suppose you let J equal to 4. You can see clearly this summation means the index V go from 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Now let's see what happened. When V equal to 0, 1.618 raised to the power 0 is 1. So all you have is just delta. Plus, when V equal to 1, you have delta times 1.618. So you get 1.618 delta. Plus, when V equal to 2, you have delta times 1.618 square, 1.618 square times delta, and so on, so on. Now, obviously, this number right here represents the first distance delta plus this second interval, which is 1.618 delta plus the next interval, which is 1.618 square. So that formula was exactly make, uh, making sense. Okay, so that is the formula for alpha upper bound. Okay, so that is the correct formula for alpha upper bound. Next thing I want to show you is the same formula is true for the lower bound. The only thing different is it go up to J minus 2. 
iteration j minus 2 instead of j. So that is the only difference between the two formula. Okay. Next thing I will explain to you by looking on the right picture on, on your right. Remember, up to now, you already figure out the so-called lower bound and the upper bound based on the picture on the left that I already explained to you. So, let's try to understand the picture on the right. Okay, if you look carefully on the picture on the right, you so far only know this lower bound function value and this upper bound function value. The next job you have to do is to insert two interior points, which I call it alpha A and alpha B. Now I apologize for you because my notation it keeps changing. In the old day, instead of alpha B, actually at that time I call it X1. And instead of calling alpha A, at that time I call it X2. Okay? So just the notation change, but but that's not a big deal, okay? So let let me let me erase that thing to make it look clearer. So you have to figure out the interior point alpha A and alpha B. Well, according to the previous uh, slide, we already developed the formula for alpha A and alpha B, and those formulas like this. Alpha A is equal to alpha lower bound plus 0 0.382, which you can see from this picture right here. Alpha A is right here. It is equal to alpha lower bound, which is right here, plus this distance. And that distance is 0 0.382 times alpha upper bound subtracts alpha lower bound. Oh, by the way, in the old day, that distance, I think we call it B. This whole thing here, according to my previous uh, notation, I think I call it B. I call it the B, okay? All right, so, th so that is a formula for alpha lower bound. But then, let's see what happened. Let's see what happened after that. Well, one thing you should recognize is this. If you look at the formula for alpha A, you say, what is alpha lower bound? Well, remember, we already developed the formula for alpha lower bound right here on that picture. So we replace alpha lower bound by the same formula that we developed earlier. That's alpha lower bound. Plus 0 0.382, well, that number is here, multiply with alpha u minus alpha l, alpha upper bound sub subtract alpha lower bound. If you take this guy, alpha u, and you subtract this guy, which is alpha l, what you get is something very simple. You see, because in general, whenever you have summation of something raised to the power of v, v go from, let's say, 0 to j, subtract summation of the same thing, inside the parentheses, the same, raised to the power of v, but v go from 0 to j minus 2, what you can do is you can replace this guy by summation of the same parentheses raised to the power v, v go from 0 to j minus 2, and then you have to add two more terms. You have to add two more terms. Why? Because to go from, let's say, v equal to 0 to j equal to 4, 
Here, if they go from v equal to 0 to j minus 2, that means j minus 2 equal to 2. So you missed two more terms, j equal to 3, j equal to 4. In other words, the summation v equal from 0 to j is the same thing as the summation from 0 to j minus 2 and then plus two more terms that you missed. And by the way, the so-called this parenthesis in this case mean delta time 1.618 raised to the power v. That's what I mean by the that parenthesis. So based on the thing that I just explained to you, now let's see how can it will help you to simplify the formula a little bit. Okay? Let's see how can it help you to simplify the formula a little bit. So let me erase this thing. So now let's see. Uh, we say what is alpha u minus alpha l and when you take alpha u is here, alpha l is here, you subtract it, all you got is this missing two term. You see this term and the next term multiplied with the factor in front, those are the two terms that you miss. So basically, alpha upper bound minus alpha lower bound is given right there. Okay? Okay. So up, once you understand alpha A, let me erase this and I will try to explain to you the next thing. Okay, so so far, that is the third step I already explained to you, okay? The fourth step that I want to explain to you is like this. If you look carefully uh, from the third step equation, let's see what happened now. Ah, you see you have this term right here. That term I rewrite right here, same thing. Okay? And then the next thing you have is what? Uh, 1.618j minus 1. Okay, you see this red term right here? Together with a delta. Together with a delta. That term actually is right here. Everybody agree? Now you can see, interesting enough, when you take 0 0.382, you multiply with this guy, which is 2.618, the answer you got is exactly equal to 1. Exactly equal to 1. So, now once you recognize that, then equation that you got from the third step become the fourth step. But then, take a look one more. What you see, the red term right here in step number four, that is exactly have the similar form like this term right there. So what does that mean? You can combine these two terms together and that will give you this formula. In other words, if you can see the first term right here, the summation go up to the j minus 2 and then you add with another term in here which is the same thing as Delta times 1.618 raised to the power of V, V in this case J minus 1. So when you add those two together, now you get summation of the same term, but it go up to V go from 0 to J minus 1. That is a very important discovery. Why? Because it's telling you that the alpha A, alpha A, which is the inserted point, one of the inserted point, that alpha A is turned out to be this guy, alpha A. But that term is already known because the summation of from 0 to j minus 1. So you see, that term is right here. You see, when you have this summation go all the way to j minus 2, that will give you the lower bound. When the summation go all the way to J, that will give you the upper bound. Alpha A turn out to be the same summation term go to the J minus 1. But that term is right there. That term already exists. 
so now I precisely clearly show you that among the two point alpha A and alpha B that you have to insert in the old day we call X2, X1 one of the point already exists so which means since alpha A already exists, already known instead of calculating the two point you only have to calculate one more point which is alpha B that is the idea okay so let me erase thing here so that the